Moving towards recovery involves mastering challenges in all food-related settings, not just during meals. In this video of a weekly supermarket trip, Mum knows that Molly, who suffers from anorexia, wants to control what goes into the basket and is determined to keep things pleasant. However, without planning and practice, it is easy to lose control of your emotions, as you'll see. Go and grab a trolley, Molly. Can you push it while I put the shopping in? Oh, look, we've got to get this done. Let's make it as pleasant as possible. Dad said he fancied curry this evening. I know you won't eat this, but what do you fancy? Um... Um... <sighs> Let's go to the vegetable section first. Hmm, we need potatoes. I think I fancy fish and chips tonight. Perhaps we can have curry tomorrow. I know you won't eat the chips, but perhaps we can think of a nice piece of cod to go with your salad. I'm not having fish. I don't eat fish. I hate fish. It used to be your favourite. That was ages ago when I was young. I'm not eating that. OK, no fish, but you're going to have some protein with that. Salad is not good enough. How about a piece of chicken then? No, no, Mum. I can't. You know I can't. I'll have a double helping of salad. Here, let me go fetch some. Molly, that is not enough for your dinner. You've got a copy of your meal plan and you know that a carrot and some bloody lettuce is not good enough. Now listen here, young lady. Either you allow me to get something for your dinner or you go and get something that will put some weight on. For goodness sake, how many times have we been through this? OK, OK. I'll go and get something. I know what I want. OK, but you know what's acceptable and what isn't. <sighs> Absolutely no way! No way! Oh, let me see. Oh, really nutritious. 56 calories. That's really going to pile on the pounds. So, you're going to have a couple of tomatoes, a carrot and a yoghurt. And you're telling me that this is the way back to a healthy body? Are you crazy? <sighs> Only last night we had the discussion about university next year. How the hell do you think you're going to get there if you carry on like this? You'll be six foot under by that time, my girl. As with the last supermarket shop, Rolly, this is not working. So this is how it's going to carry on for the remainder. I'm going to do the shopping without your help. You are going to put the shopping in, and I am going to push the trolley. Look, you're drawing attention to yourself. Isn't it bad enough you look the way you do without drawing further attention to yourself? Now, follow me. I'm not eating that. Be quiet. Why can't you just listen to me? If I listen to you, you won't be around for many more of these torturous trips. Maybe that would be better. What did you say? Said, maybe that would be better! <laughs> as in all of these videos about developing skills, it's important to regard challenges such as a food shop as small experiments, trying out and remembering what works and what doesn't. Remember, every mistake is a treasure. As much as possible, trips should be planned, anticipating obstacles and solutions. The goal is to normalise behaviour around food and to ensure that anxiety reduces after each challenge. This involves making the right sized goals and spending time visualising your behaviour. Oh, I know these supermarket trips are difficult for you, Molly. But I want you to know I really appreciate you being here with me today. I want you to know I'll do anything to help you alleviate any stress in the next half an hour. Please let me know when you need my support. Now, last night you said you wanted to do your entire week's shopping, be able to go around the supermarket, 
ticking off your items and putting them in the trolley. Now, would it help if I push the trolley or would you like to? She's lying. She's manipulating you. She wants you to fill that cart with calories, millions of calories. And you know what she'll then expect? She'll expect you to eat them, eat the whole lot, fatten you up, make you obese, pig-like. It's tough, isn't it, my darling? Last night you were talking about your plans for university and how much you want to go. I know I don't entirely understand what you're feeling, but I want to be the best support I can. Now I've got my list here and I'm going to tick off everything as I go round. Now my list is for the whole family, so I don't want you to feel the pressure if I pick up foods that may frighten you. Right now, Dad fancies curry. What do you fancy tonight? What's on your list? Um... <sighs> Mum is encouraging and firm, reminding Molly of her previous intentions. She tries some reassurance and talks about the whole family. See, I told you so. Curry. The next thing will be the guilt trip, Molly. Dad's having a curry. We all need to eat a curry. Do you know how many calories are in a curry? You're going to wake up huge tomorrow if you go th with her plan. Don't listen to her. I'm your only friend around here. You know that. Come on, let's go to the vegetable section first. I'll eat salad. Salad is nutritious. Yeah. Yes, it is. So I'll fetch some salad. But you need some protein to go with that. I know you know that because it's on your nutrition sheet at home. Protein? Same as curry. Don't be manipulated by her. She's not on your side. Go on, tell her. T-E-L-L her. You'll feel so powerful if you take control over what goes into your mouth. Don't let her dictate. Don't let the enemy dictate how you live your life. I'm not having fish. I don't eat fish. I hate fish. That was ages ago when I was young. I'm not eating fish. I can't. Okay, Molly. I sense the anxiety building up here. I know it's tough. Last night when we talked about this trip, you said it might help you if you had your own list. So what have you noted down on there? Salad? Yes, salad. But you know the other requirements to get your life back together. Back on track. This is getting your life back together which is important to you. And you're smart. And you know that salad only isn't enough to reach your goals. Now what is on your list that you think might help us get you on track? I'll have a double helping of salad. Here, let me go fetch some. Jeez, does she never give up? She just goes on and on and on. What is wrong with her? She doesn't have your best interests at heart, but I do, Molly. Well, no other option. Escape. Go on. Got to get out of here. Mum keeps her comments to a minimum and rolls with resistance, not falling into the trap of arguing or discussing food, instead continuing with praise. She reminds Molly of her plans to make her own list, suggesting that she can have some control and choice. OK. Hopefully she'll leave you alone for a bit. I think you're doing so well. So proud of you. A lettuce and a carrot. You might have been better going one or the other, but I can understand that sometimes you need to do what you have to. Better chance of keeping the enemy quiet. Hey, did you know the chaplains have got themselves a new puppy? I saw it the other week. Oh, it's so adorable. It's a little golden retriever, only eight weeks old. Lynn said, feel free to come around any time to see him. Oh, wow, that's neat. I'd love that. Lucky them. Don't do it. She's tricking you. Think calories, Molly. She's pulling you into a daft dog conversation and whilst you're there, she'll slip something in that trolley. Look, we're coming up to the fat food section. Here we go. She's going to trick you. Wait for it. OK, Molly. Could you mind passing me that curry for Dad? I've got to be at a parent's evening tomorrow for Henry. And... He's going to be working late. So what are you going to have? Let's see what's on that list of yours. OK, um, I'll go and get something. I know what I want. OK. I told you so. 
You know I'm always right. You're going to have to fight. Be strong. So proud of you. Go get something a bit more fattening, just to get her off your back. You can always throw it up afterwards. We won't let her win, Molly. I'm your friend, remember? I trust you, Molly. You know what you need to do. Mum uses non-ED talk to try and distract Molly's thought processes, becoming obsessed with food and calories. Again, she normalises family mealtimes by explaining her rationale for eating separate meals the following evening, bringing conversations back round to what Molly will choose for this evening. She is warm and positive in the hope that this will enable Molly to fight the anxiety. OK, Molly, take a deep breath. You can obviously feel the anxiety building up here. I must admit I'm beginning to feel a bit stressed too, but we must break this pattern for both of our sakes. We've been in this situation before and we've learnt from it. It seems to me that the anorexia is adamant it's going to outwin in the next half an hour. I don't feel like fighting it at the moment, but I am also adamant it's not going to take over. Your goal was to do an entire weekly shop. Maybe th that was a bit over-adventurous. We don't want your confidence to head south. So maybe we should rethink your goal. <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day. Maybe we should rethink your goal here and now to something that makes you feel like you've achieved this, but without sending your stress levels through the roof. Mum uses self-reflection to describe how she is feeling. She uses more reflective listening to show Molly that she is listening to her fears and then separates the illness from the person. Mum is consistent in remaining focused on her own goals, but also shows understanding that Molly's goal may have been a bit over-ambitious for this week. Mum then role models flexible thinking by reminding Molly that she has a choice to set another, more achievable goal. Molly, I feel you leaving me. She's winning you over, Molly. Don't leave me. I'm your friend. It's tough, isn't it? I'm really proud of your courage, Molly. Last night you were really upbeat about your future plans. And right now I want to hang on to that conversation. There'll be humps and bumps along the way, but you've got a really good support network. Family, friends and the team at the unit. We'll get through this, Molly. But right now, what can we do to help you get through this stress? I'll be back. You know I'm your friend. I, I guess I'm just not handling it so great at the moment. I thought this trip would be easier. It sounded so much easier when I wrote my list this morning. I feel disappointed with myself. Seems to me that it would be a good plan to rethink your goal for the week. And that would show that you're more than capable of showing yourself some kindness. How would you feel about being a bit more compassionate towards yourself and your efforts to beat this? How about if I go and get my dinners for the next two evenings? It's fine. I will have to do the remainder though. What with working full time and visiting grandma in hospital. I don't have time to do a supermarket shop on a daily basis. What's that? If I get you some safe but nutritious dinners for the rest of the week. By again reminding Molly of the bigger picture, i.e. future plans, and the context of the family as a whole, using reflections and open questions, Mum is able to convince Molly to try and come up with a more achievable plan, one that she will be comfortable with. She then provides an explanation as to why it wouldn't be feasible for them to do a daily shop, followed by an open question targeted at how Molly feels with Mum's suggestion. I'll go and buy tonight and tomorrow's dinner. I managed to think of three dinners. There's some tuna there, a piece of chicken, and a veggie burger. I've also got some Miller Lights for dessert. You've already got fruit and salad, right? I think I may go sit outside. It's lovely and warm outside, much warmer than in here. It is a bit chilly inside. 
I'm so proud of you, Molly. That's great. You really stretched that goal. Well done, darling. Take some money. Perhaps you could pick me up a paper. You can start the crossword if you want to. Later on we could finish it together. Sounds like a plan, Mum. Thank you. Are there any more pubs for sale? <laughs> In this scenario, despite planning and goal setting, Molly's anxiety level increased. And rather than confronting, Mum decides to roll with resistance. This enables the carer to sidestep a confrontation. Reconsidering goals can sometimes be more helpful than pushing on with high anxiety levels. Mum keeps her focus and offers Molly choices. We saw the eating disorder voice get weaker as the anxiety dissipated. It's when stress levels are high that the eating disorder voice can take over an individual's thoughts.